With the sidewalks in place, you will now use them to extract surfaces for building lots. If you need to catch up, use the file named cityblocksroadslots.max, which has the road infrastructures and the sidewalks in place. Zoom in on city block A on the left. You'll start with that one. Earlier, use the roads to extract the sidewalks. This time, use the sidewalks to extract the building lots. The process is similar, yet a bit easier, as the building lots are flat and don't require the extra work brought on by the sweep modifier. Select the geometry, and in the Modify panel, enter Border Mode. Hold Ctrl down for multiple selections, and then click on the borders you need to extract. Do not attempt a click and drag, as each sidewalk actually has two borders. You only need the inner border selected. Create a linear shape from the selection as you learned to do before. Exit border mode and select the new shape. It's made of multiple islands. To turn it into solid flat surfaces, simply add an Edit Poly modifier. Go to the Slate Material Editor. In this tutorial, you will map these surfaces with paving stones. Create a new arc and design material using the matte template. Make sure the new material is set to show in the viewports. As a diffuse map, choose the bitmap named gdpavers01.jpg. There are six images of paving stones. You'll use all of them to bring more variety to the environment. If you have other textures in mind, such as grass or dirt, you can use the same techniques learned here to adapt them. Double-click the bitmap node and set it to use real-world scale. Set the scale to about 10 meters by 10 meters. You can always adjust that later if you need to. Apply the material to the new object. It still doesn't show in the viewport as you need to apply mapping coordinates. Add a UVW map modifier to the object. You can leave it in planar mode as you only need a projection from top. However, make sure you use real-world map size to get an accurate result. All lots are now mapped with the same texture. Next, you bring a bit of variety to the mix. In the Material Editor, Shift move the new material and its bitmap to create a clone. Repeat to create a total of six Paving Stones material duplicates. Make sure all the duplicated materials are also set to show in the viewport, and then replace the bitmap textures to make use of the other Paving Stone images. Now add a multi-sub-object material to the mix and set it to have six sub-materials. Connect the Paving Stones materials to the multi-sub-object node. Finally, apply the top-level multi-sub node to the object in the scene and then dismiss or move the Material Editor window. It does not appear to make a difference yet, but that's because all polygons are uniformly set to face ID number 1. Convert the building lots object to an editable poly. This collapses the stack and bakes in the mapping coordinates. In polygon mode, note that all faces are currently set to ID number 1. Select the faces that you want to affect with a different texture and choose another ID number between 2 and 6. Exit Polygon Mode when done. You still need to put everything together so that the city block works as one unit. Select the roads, sidewalks, object, and then use Attach to attach the newly created lots. Make sure you match the material IDs to the materials so you don't lose the work you have done. Finally, you need to consolidate your material as you have learned to do. In the Material Editor, Select all nodes as they apply to the roads, sidewalks, and building lots and delete them. Use the Material Picker 
and click the city block in the scene. You now have one large multi sub object material that affects all parts of the city block. Rearrange the material nodes as you have learned to do. The paving materials are now affecting face IDs between 14 and 19 instead of 1 through 6, courtesy of the Attach Match ID tool. This takes care of City Block A. For the other two, the procedure is similar, except you've already created the paving stones materials. This means you can extract the shape from selected borders as before. and add the Edit Poly modifier and the UVW Map modifier in real-world map size. Once you have done that, you can collapse the stack by converting the object to an editable poly again. This time around, though, you don't need to worry about the material as you have already created it. Select the roadworks and then use Attach to attach the lots. There are no prompts as both objects are still currently assigned the same material. Right-click to end the command and apply the new consolidated material to the city block. From this point on, go into polygon mode and decide which lot goes on which texture by choosing IDs between 14 and 19. Exit Polygon Mode when done. Take a minute to work on the third city block following the same workflow you just went through. When you're done, save your file. In the next movie, you light the scene using the daylight system.